Hello, my dear friends. How are you doing? Hope you are having an amazing day and not having to deal with drama. Ready for new stories I have for you today? Let's go to the first one. And don't forget to listen to the end of the story, guys, to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. I'm a 19-year-old college student with a younger sister, Emma, who's 18. We grew up in a middle-class family, and our parents always emphasized the importance of education. Since I was a kid, they had been saving up for my college fund. It's not a fortune, but it's enough to get me through college without taking on significant debt. Emma recently got engaged to her high school sweetheart, Jake. They're both very young, and while I support her decision to marry him, I was surprised when she came to me with a request. She wanted to use my college fund to pay for her dream wedding. She argued that weddings are once-in-a-lifetime events and that she and Jake couldn't afford the kind of wedding they wanted without my help. I was taken aback. I had always been clear that I intended to use that money for my education, and our parents had saved it specifically for that purpose. I told Emma I couldn't give her the money, explaining that college was important to me and that I needed the funds to secure my future. She was furious and called me selfish, saying that I was ruining her special day and that I should prioritize family over personal ambitions. The situation escalated quickly. My parents, who were initially on my side, started feeling guilty and pressured by Emma's constant complaints and emotional outbursts. They suggested that I could take out a student loan to cover my college expenses and let Emma have the money for her wedding. They said I would eventually pay off the loans, but Emma's wedding was a one-time event. I stood my ground, but now the entire family is divided. Some relatives think I'm being unreasonable and should help my sister out, while others agree that the college fund should be used for its intended purpose. Emma hasn't spoken to me in weeks, and the tension is unbearable. My parents are caught in the middle, and the whole situation has caused a rift in our once close-knit family. So am I the a-hole for not letting my sister use my college fund for her wedding? Emma's wedding will not be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Considering her age, lack of maturity, selfishness, and entitlement, this wedding will be the first of many. She will be pregnant in 12 months and divorced in 5 years. Money towards her wedding is an absolute waste. OP should not give her a cent. She has her own college fund and should use that to pay for her wedding. OP needs to distance herself from Emma and anyone agreeing with her. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Quote, Since I was a kid, they had been saving up for my college fund. End quote. So they should use it for that purpose. However, why don't your parents have something saved for Emma? Didn't they put money aside for her too since she was a kid? That she could choose to use for her wedding now. What's the deal there? Edited to add, in light of OP's response, totally not the a-hole. The entire family should be ashamed of themselves for enabling this spoiled a-hole. OP says, the thing is, she is planning to go to an Ivy League college, and she needs to use her fund to help pay for the expense of schooling. I still have a lot from my fund since I go to a smaller school on scholarship. Not the a-hole. This is one downside to getting married so young. You often cannot afford the wedding you want. Why don't they get married in a courthouse, then save up for a year or so and have the wedding they want? You can still make it a special event. I've been to several where I didn't even know the couple was already legally married, because it doesn't matter. Not the a-hole, and you would be right to be ashamed of your parents right now. A wedding is a one-day event, it is a show, and an expensive wedding is a want, not a need. Why doesn't your sister have her own college fund to squander? Didn't your parents plan for her future too? Why can't Emma take out a large personal loan to pay for her wedding and pay it back eventually? Does she want your entire college fund for her one day of glory? Stand your ground. Get your education. Your sister isn't mature enough as yet to be married, and your parents are apparently weak. Update. After my initial post, Emma's behavior became even more erratic. She started threatening to cancel her wedding altogether if I didn't give her the money. She said that if her wedding couldn't be exactly how she dreamed, then she'd rather not have it at all. Her threats caused even more tension in our family, and I felt immense pressure from all sides. One evening, Jake, her fiancé, came to talk to me. He had heard bits and pieces of what was going on, but didn't fully understand why Emma was so insistent on getting the college fund money. I sat him down and explained everything in detail. How our parents had saved this money specifically for my education. How much it meant to me to go to college without taking on a huge debt and how devastated I was that Emma was asking me to sacrifice my future for her wedding. Apparently, he was made to believe that she wants her part of the college fund money, and he didn't know that she is after mine. Jake was shocked. 
He hadn't realized the full extent of Emma's demands and was visibly upset. He thanked me for being honest with him and said he needed some time to think. I could see the worry and disappointment on his face, but I hoped he would help Emma see reason. A few days later, Emma called me screaming at me. Apparently, Jake called off the wedding. He told Emma that her obsession with having a perfect wedding at the expense of my future showed him a side of her he hadn't seen before, and it made him question whether they were ready for marriage. Emma was devastated. She cried and screamed, blaming me entirely for ruining her relationship. She accused me of being jealous and spiteful, and the rift between us grew even wider. My parents felt guilty for not being able to provide the extravagant wedding Emma wanted. They were also embarrassed in front of family and friends because of the cancelled wedding, and they projected all of that frustration onto me. They argued that family should come first, and accused me of being selfish for not prioritizing Emma's special day. They said that if I had just agreed to give up my college fund, none of this would have happened. They accused me of being selfish and heartless, and the pressure from them became unbearable. But the final slap in the face was that they decided to take my college fund money that they had saved for me and give it to Emma as compensation for her ruined wedding and broken engagement. They said that I could fend for myself since I caused so much pain and disruption in the family. The moment they told me this, I felt like my entire world was crumbling. Not only did I lose my parents' support, but I also lost the financial means to continue my education without going into significant debt. Emma, meanwhile, showed no remorse. In fact, she seemed almost pleased with the outcome. She now had the money to do whatever she wanted, and I could see satisfaction in her eyes. It was as if she had won some sick game, and I was left to pick up the pieces of my shattered life. It's been incredibly tough, but I'm determined not to give up on my dreams. Thank you again for your support. It's been a tough journey, but I'm hopeful that I can rise above this and create a better future for myself. Backstory I lost my dad to a tragic accident when I was a very young kid. He was a jet pilot in the Air Force. Stuff happens. My mom found herself a widow at age 28 with three kids. Tough times. After a year or so of her being stuck in a heavy depression, times of which I have but faint memories, she came back to life. After some months of dating, she went to marry my dad's best friend, with whom we were already well acquainted. He was also in the military, commanding officer in submarines. My dad's family was not pleased at all with that wedding, to the point that my grandmother forbid any relative from attending it. They felt like it was disrespectful to my dad's memory, legacy, and they felt like they had a say in how my mom would lead her life from now on. Yeah, like, what the duck, right? I would have enough material to run a multi-installment story about my dad's family and their bewildering sense of entitlement with our lives. But for now, I'll just focus on my aunts, since that moment was probably the highest ranking in terms of induced astonishment for us. So, we are now some years in my mom's second marriage. The year is 90-something. I'm 9 or 10 years old, and my little stepbrother is a couple of months old. We live in a coastal town, because Navy base, and my entitled aunt, EA, announces she'll be visiting over the weekend because she wants to see her three nephews, niece. My mom and stepfather oblige, since they think it's important that we, the kids, keep contact with our dad's family and relatives, despite my parents not being on good terms with them. Entitled aunt arrives on Sunday and immediately demands that her trip be refunded by my parents. Then she proceeds to cuss them, belittle them, and tell them how worthless they are. Seeing how the conversation gets quickly heated, my mom ushers us upstairs while stepfather does the talking. At some point, I sneak out of my room and, from the staircase, witness how that last bit of conversation unfolded, which gloriously ended my entitled aunt's relationship with my parents. Mom, holding my still very young stepbrother in her arms. Calm down, entitled aunt, and lower your voice. You're upsetting the baby. Entitled aunt. Don't you dare talk to me like that, you little B, you W. You just couldn't hold it, huh? You just had to dishonor us all by getting married again so you could have S again, huh? Stepfather, shut up, entitled aunt. This is absolutely insane. I can't stand it anymore. Do you even realize what you're saying? Entitled aunt, and you, you horrible man. When I think you were once invited to our place for the summer by my dad's name, how could you turn so evil after that? Don't you know my parents? Have you got no respect for them? Mum, entitled aunt, you're talking absolutely nonsense. 
Please respect me, my freedom, and our family by leaving our home. Stepfather. Now. Entitled Aunt. Fine. She lays her eyes on our stereo in the corner of our living room and adds after a pause all of the sudden. But I'm taking your stereo with me as a compensation. Mum. What the actual? What do you mean a compensation? Stepfather. Unable to remain patient any longer. Fine. Just take it and go the duck out of the place. Stepfather goes to unplug the stereo while Entitled Aunt quickly grabs some random CDs that were lying around. Entitled Aunt is quickly shoved out of the house by Stepfather, and my last memory of that afternoon is of her, seen from the window of my sleeping room, as she was trying to stuff the said stereo in her luggage, open in the middle of our driveway. She was never invited again, and never tried to invite herself at our place after that. P.S. As I grew older, I was able to develop some sounder relationship with most of the relatives on my dad's side, but Entitled Aunt somehow always remained a bit shy and distant. Forget the stereo. That Entitled B should have simply been shoved out the door and told never to darken their doorstep again, complete with a military boot up the chocolate chute. It boggles my mind how people can judge widows, widowers, especially young ones, for getting married again. Are they supposed to mourn for the rest of their lives? Like they're never allowed to love another person again. If they get married again, it's disrespectful to the first spouse. I mean, if you have another kid, you don't stop loving the first kid. Yeesh. My husband, let's call him David, and I got married in February 2018. David's parents never really warmed up to me because they were still endlessly talking about David's ex. Let's call her Ashley. Ashley was very A to David, and then he left her. They have a son together, and Ashley still to this day uses David's parents as free babysitters because David and I don't live in the same state as them anymore. When we got married, we eloped in a small park in the South and just wanted it to be an intimate thing. I told my parents way prior to us getting married, they live across the country, that that's what we were going to do. David was afraid his parents would judge him, so he didn't tell them, not even the day of. He said he wanted to tell them in person, which was two weeks after the fact. When he told them, his mom burst into tears and yelled at me for being a rebound and that they thought he would date around more. Well, two weeks after this explosion, we were out having a campfire, just me, David, and David's dad. We were having a good time. Just a little backstory. David's dad had cancer. He's doing fine now. But he always had a habit of mixing up names. He'd call me David's ex's name all the time, and I dismissed it because I know he didn't mean to. Well, David's mom and sister came out to the campfire, and then David's mom started saying crap, so David's dad tried defending me, but he called me David's ex's name on accident. His mom and sister laughed at me. I was done, so I left, and David called me and asked me to come back. I said I couldn't. He said that even though he was drinking, if I didn't come back, he would have to drive after me. I didn't want him drinking and driving, so I went back. Manipulation, I know. Well, in April of 2018, I got pregnant. My husband is military and he got orders across the country. I was in the military too and had to stay there because that's where I was stationed. So the pregnancy was spent alone. His family lived in the same city I was stationed, but maybe saw me once or twice the whole pregnancy and stated that they didn't invite me over because I was quiet. Of course I was quiet. Anyway, when our son was born, I spent my maternity leave with my husband across the country and had to finish out my last few months of active duty back in his hometown. In the three months I was there, they saw our son once, and whenever they got my stepson, I always asked if I could spend one-on-one -on -one time with him, and they always said no, because it was their time with him. David asked Ashley multiple times if I could get my stepson every other weekend, but she would never reply to him out of spite. When I finally left his hometown, it was like a weight was lifted off my shoulders. But in June of 2019, my husband, his sister, and mom were in a group chat, and David sent a pic of our son to them, and David's mom said, he's ugly and looks just like OP's dad. She forgot that David was part of the group message members. I didn't find out she said this until a couple of months ago, and my husband wanted to take him to their house for Christmas last year. I just don't get it. What should we do about his family? You are no contact with these people as of now. So is your child. 
If they want to have a relationship with you or your child, they owe you some serious apologies and a commitment to better behavior. Now let's address your husband problem, because that's what this is. A huge husband problem, where he is normalized A and doesn't realize that his role is to protect you and your child from monsters like his parents. Your husband needs to learn how to draw boundaries. Most people who have normalized A cannot learn to do this on their own. They need to get into therapy in order to denormalize their childhoods and realize that it's okay to draw healthy boundaries with family members. Get your husband into therapy pronto. If he refuses individual therapy, do couples counseling. You can still make headway there. Make sure your husband knows how serious this is and that he needs to act now or risk losing his family. This is a very difficult matter for me. I'm not good with words or expressing my emotions. It's something I've been aware of all my life and I've always made the effort to make sure my actions, at the very least, reflect what I actually think. This is why, I think, it's very hard for me to even begin to start pretending like I care about someone I actually don't, namely, my children's half-siblings. I was married to their mother a long time ago and divorced her when I found out about her cheating on me with someone whom she claimed was a one-night stand that happened due to her being under the influence. Given that she then soon wound up pregnant and married to him after our divorce, it's plain to see that was a lie. But it's a lie that no longer matters to me and hasn't for a long time. I have moved on with my life and found someone else, with whom I have been very happy and still am. But that's not the part of my life that's relevant for the topic at hand, so I'll move on. My son and my daughters have a half-brother and a half-sister who are, respectively, 9 and 10 years old. Up until six months ago, the time they spent with them, their love for them, was never anything I objected to. But, to be fair, I didn't really care about them one way or the other. I have never been anything but civil and polite, and regardless of the past between their mother and myself, I have never mistreated the children, or looked at them with contempt or disdain or disgust. They're children. They're innocent in the whole matter. I have said this once or twice to my own children when they asked me about it. Maybe that's where the problem started building up. For this recent Christmas, they asked me to invite their half-siblings to my home. Putting aside the issue that we had other family, both my wife's and my own, coming to our house, and there'd be just enough space for all of us, I didn't really understand where this was coming from. Before, my children were perfectly content with our situation, and I certainly didn't keep them to myself over the holidays or object to them going to their mothers. Then, there was the fact that I had maintained my distance over the years, because, well, they're not my children. My youngest was the one who first started getting really upset with my polite refusal to invite them to our home. But, very quickly, her brother and sister joined her as well. They started accusing me of hating their half-siblings. That's why I never got them anything for the holidays or their birthdays. I understand on some level why they think this. They think that because I don't care for them, it must mean that I hate them for what their mother did to our family and me a long time ago, which simply isn't true. I don't care for them in the same way that I don't care for a stranger I might see passing in the street. It's not malicious. It just is. But, as I said, I have trouble expressing my emotions and, even with my wife's help, the day ended on a sour note with my children. We have talked some more later and they have thought off a bit, but given what they spoke, I think it's safe to assume that they expect me to include them in some future family gathering and activities. That won't happen. I genuinely don't see a reason for this. I won't forbid my children from seeing them or having them over on their own at some other time, but I won't pretend like they're my family when they're not. That would be deceitful and perhaps even harmful. I need help. It's plain to see. I'm looking for advice or suggestions, maybe even guides on how to handle future situations like this. I don't want to damage the relationship I have with my children any further. I love them a great deal, and I'm here to ask for your help. What can I do? I guess I'm confused as to why these kids wouldn't be spending their big days with their actual aunts and uncles. Where did this weird notion of going to dinner with a different family come from? Ask your older kids about this. At 15 and 17, it's kind of surprising that they can't understand you have no interest in developing a relationship with these kids. I wouldn't either. I really think you need to work with your wife to talk to them about how they are not and will never be your family and that you would prefer to keep that part of your life separate. I'm female, 38, 8 years older than my sister, female, 30. 
Because of our age difference, my parents tried two different parenting styles on us. While they were very strict with me, they spoiled my little sister very much. My dad used to joke that they learned from their mistakes when raising me to perfect parenting when it came to my sister. I suffered depression growing up, and I think that made my parents resent me a little. They had no issues with my sister. She was, obviously, to me and many others, the favorite child. I'm ashamed to admit that I grew up so jealous of my little sister. The jealousy turned into indifference when we grew older, partly because of the age gap, making it impossible to find common interests while always being in different stages of our lives, but mostly because I couldn't handle her feeling entitled to whatever she fancied. We got a bit closer in recent years. I met my husband, male 40, when I was 25, and we got married within a year. We decided very early on that we didn't want children. We have been living a very happy and quiet life. My sister got married five years ago. Unfortunately, she found out not long after that her chance of having biological children is very slim. This devastated her since she was dying to start a family. I found out in the middle of November that I was 12 weeks pregnant, twins. I was very shocked to say the least because I was on the pill. I also felt immense happiness which was surprising since children were never in my plans. My husband cried actually when I told him that I was actually happy so we decided to keep them. When I called my mom to tell her, her reaction broke my heart. Her first question was, are you going to keep it? Then she kept saying, no, 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 you can't be doing this to your sister right now. Are you seriously considering having children? She asked me that I should let her be the one to tell my sister and dad. When I ended the call, I cried all that afternoon. Not even when my husband conjured two large pistachio gelatos did I stop crying. My father texted me congratulations, but my sister's reaction was the worst. She texted me that I was a vindictive bee, that I'm doing this now to get back at her for being mistreated as a child, that if I don't have an A, my babies will probably be R slur for having an old hag as a mother. I forwarded the text to my mom, who called and started crying, asking me to be understanding. My sister is hurting, and I needed to give her time. A few weeks ago, my mother texted me, Neither mom or dad has seen or called me since I broke the news. That husband and I will have to celebrate Christmas without them because my sister isn't ready to be around pregnant women. I answered that I wasn't counting on that. Yesterday she texted again asking for the keys to my vacation home. Huh? Before I found out I was pregnant, the plan was to spend the holidays in my and husband's vacation home up north to guarantee snow on Christmas Eve, and we could go skiing. My mom thought that when she disinvited us, that she still would use our home. You're pregnant, so you can't ski anyway, and your sister needs the vacation. I don't know what to do. I can't describe my indignation and distress. But the thing is, my husband and I are going to spend Christmas with his sister and her family, so we don't need the vacation home. I still can't believe they're still going ahead with the plans sans me. I am so bitter right now. Don't let them use your holiday cottage. Tell them since they will not be joining, you plan to party with friends. Their treatment of you is shockingly bad. If it were me, I wouldn't hand over the keys and I wouldn't bother explaining why. I suspect you're a nicer person than me, but also keep in mind that every such decision sets a tone for the next one. Handing over the keys would say that you're okay with being excluded and used, reinforcing the expectation that you exist to provide unquestioningly. Over time, your parents and sister may assume that you will prioritize them over your own kids. I would suggest taking a stand, sooner rather than later. 